So then Eric Gadsden, my good buddy from way, way back when, 1973, right? He was a black guy. And uh, he had a muscle that was shaped like a heart. It was really the coolest thing you ever saw in your whole fucking life because because that motherfucker never worked out. He was a track star. He went to Texas A&M on a scholarship, right? And he went to Mount Pleasant, which was like across the street from LaSalle where I went. And that son of a bitch could run like the wind. So anyway, he used to come down to our neighborhood all the time, you know? And what he would do is he would come down and play with us because we were just like cool people and everything. And his brother Walter, you know, he was kind of a nice guy too. And uh, Eric was one of those guys whose dad was black and his mom, uh, don't know, his dad was white and his mom was black too. He was kind of half in between. He couldn't figure out where he belonged, you know? But he didn't like the brothers because a lot of them was causing trouble. So he hung out with us because we didn't bother anybody. We were just hanging out in our neighborhood, you know? So Eric would come down and like I said, this was 1973. And there was the cops in Providence, and they didn't like him. <clears throat> they didn't have any reason not to like him. They, they didn't like him because of the color of his skin, right? And, and, and they used to tell him that, you know, we don't want your type around here. you got to go up across the border there, you know. There was like a border between Providence and South Providence. And, and all the blacks lived in South Providence, and the whites, they lived in Providence, you know. But, you know, after a while, the, <clears throat> the line <clears throat> uh, be, became, you know, unclear. And uh, so Eric would keep coming down, and he was cool, and he used to hang out, and my mother used to invite him in for brownies, and she used to love him. I think she was in love with him, because my father was gone at the time. But that's another story. He was kind of young for her, you know. But uh, anyway, one day we're standing back at a donut shop, right? There was a donut shop. I think they, their name was Burns Donut Shop. Yeah, they, they used to give us a couple of glazed donuts at night if we'd hang around after they finished baking their shit for the next morning, you know, so they'd become crusty before you got, to, got it. We were hanging out there one day in the back of the donut shop, and then, and then Stephen and what's his name, they were there also, and I think Louie was there, and Stephanie might have been there, and I forget who else was there, but anyway, it was a whole bunch of us, you know, and uh, we were just hanging out, and we hadn't had any beer or mad dog wine that day, so everything was fine, and we were cool, you know, everything, but Eric is there, and he's got this 10-speed bicycle, right, and he's sitting there, and uh, we're just chit-chatting and doing all that kind of stuff, <coughs> and here comes the cops, man, and these motherfuckers, they, they... They get out of the fucking car, and they go to, to Eric, and they throw him up against some fucking car, right? And and they um they they uh, try to search him, you know, and he's he's kind of resistant because you know he doesn't know what the fuck is going on, and and uh, and he keeps saying, "Why are you bothering me?" and everything, and and the cops are saying like, "There's a robbery, and there was a robbery, and all this kind of stuff," and and uh. And Eric said it wasn't me, and we all said, no, Eric has been here all day long, man. I mean, he's been with us, you know. He's, he's, he's one of us, man. He's, he ain't causing no trouble. This guy never heard a fucking flea in his whole entire life. And, and, and so the cops, they weren't listening to us, you know. And then they searched him, and then, and then they, uh, they roughed him up a little bit. And then, then his bike was laying on the ground, and they put him in the back of the car. And, and the motherfuckers ran over his bike. I mean, they ran over his fucking 10-speed bike. I mean, that was $100, and, and, and this kid worked for that. And they ran over the fucking thing, man. I w and I couldn't do anything. I mean, I was 12. What do you do? You know, you're supposed to you're supposed to listen to the cops, and all. But I, I couldn't understand for the life of me why these motherfuckers were doing that to my friend. They told him that they didn't want to see him around there anymore. So what am I thinking? As my friend that I'm never going to see again. And since then I've hated cops.